You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast by Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom, Dr. Frederick J. Long, Dr. Mario Melendez, Dr. Jennifer Noonan, and J. M. Smith. Welcome and enjoy. Hello, welcome back to Constituent Marking with Fred Long on Proof Text. I'm Fred Long. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5. And this constituent marking method is a way to help navigate the sentence. I've been talking about that. If you can see the screen, you can see how to do the marking. And it's a little legend. If, you get, if you're listening, um, you don't have the privilege of seeing that. I'll try to explain. If you're watching, you can pause. And if you want to kind of understand what I'm doing, uh, you can look down there and refer to that. But we're going to pick up with verse 5. And one of the first things I do when looking at sentences is looking at for connectors. And I see a ke. I see a ke diaresis diakonion diakonion isin ke o aftos kurios. I see a ke. I see two kes. And there's an obvious parallelism of verse 5 with verse 4. Each of them has the uh, eresis in the plural, which means diversities. Um, it actually is the, the Greek word diaresis, which means uh, uh, it is a symbol. It's a double dot, looks like an umlaut, and it's placed over the second of two Greek vowels that might otherwise be, be thought to be a diphthong or a monophthong. And it, it's a symbol to separate them. So in the in the verb, for example, pro istemi, the um, the iota has a diaresis to indicate that it is not a diphthong with the omicron in front of it, but rather uh, is to be pronounced separately. So pro istemi. It also has an acute accent. All right. So, diaresis means varieties or distinguishing. So, and there is a distinguishing with isin is the verb, a single underline isin, diaresis, diakonion, and there's the genitive. Diakonion means ministries. And then, so, so far, the sentence is single underline, diaresis, arrow from diakonion to diaresis, which is the subject. And then, isin is single underline, third plural from imi. Now, I'm supplying a dummy subject, what's called a dummy subject, there are. And uh, it can be a little bit uh, confusing to beginning Greek students when, when to do that, when not to do that. Um, you kind of just have to make sense of, uh, of things. If it's, if it's needing, there's not a predicate nominative. That can be one clue that you need to supply a there is or a there are. Um, and so that's what I'm doing in this case. Now, the second part of verse 5 is ke o aftos kurios. And all of those receive a single underline. This is an adjectival use of aftos. It is called the identical Use it's in the first attributive position. This use of av, avtos uh, we saw above with the ta, uh, to avto pnevma, the same spirit. Here we have the same Lord. This construction with avtos always takes the article, it's called identical use, occurs about 50 times, 50 times in the Greek New Testament. So, what is what is going on here? This is again like this verse 4, a null verb sentence. What is the verb here? And, I mean, literally just means and the same Lord. So verse 5 translated together is, and there are diversities of ministries or services, and the same Lord does what? There's some verb that's implied. Um we could supply like there is the same Lord, or I think it maybe we get we get the verbal idea at the end and at a geo, 
because it says the same God works all of them out. So it's the same spirit that en erge, it's the same uh it's the same Lord that en erge. So I think that is the one working them. So the same Spirit works them. The same Lord works them. And I think that's what's going on. We have a very clear parallelism going on here. It's going to continue into the next verse, which we'll look at next time, as well as a real cool artifact. So you want to make sure you listen uh, and watch next time. I'll discuss this artifact But something to end with uh, as we end this episode is just the significance of the ke, the kes here, um, that marks something different than de. De marks new development. Ke is marking thematic addition or additive. Uh, Something is added to to what's being said. Now, uh, there can obviously be overlap with like adding a new development or or adding something that those can be very similar um but ke is adding something into the scene but not necessarily uh in a new or distinctive way so this is pretty obvious with the first ke in verse 5 because it's adding diversities of ministries it's adding that into the scene um, that has already been established in verse 4 of a diversity of gifts. And then it's adding the same Lord in. Not as a distinctive development, um, which is kind of interesting. You know, we could say, well, the Lord and the Spirit work together in kind of a close way. We could maybe go in that direction a bit. I mean, the Spirit, after all, is the Spirit of the Lord. Um, but we could run into a little bit of a theological problem because in verse 6, in the parallelism, we have a de, the same God, but uh, the same same God. So I'm not sure that explanation works. But all I have to say is that there can be some overlap in function of ke and de, but they're also they're, they're constraining the discourse in slightly different ways. And it causes, we have to notice that, and then we ask questions. So whenever we're doing marking method, the constituent marking, we can put question marks in the text. And and here, I would want to put a question mark. I'm putting question marks around the ke. Why is the ke used there and not the de? But, um, well, we'll stop right there. And you want to make sure you listen next time, watch next time, because we're going to discuss what I think is the cultural background to these verses, which is is a really fascinating to think about. Because why is Paul stressing, a little teaser here, the same spirit, the same Lord, and the same God, while he's also talking about diversities of gifts, ministries, and workings. Stay tuned next time. Thanks for listening and watching. Constituent Marking with Fred Long on Prooftext. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glowsahouse.com today. Glow's House, language resources for the global community.